this Music Mentor Series webinar. We're here today with You Rock Guitar and Satellite Empire. Yes. Um, so, Nestor, you, uh, what do you play in, in the band? Well, I play the guitar, quote unquote. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and Danny here plays the same kind of bass. Yep. All right. Yep. So, tell me a little bit about uh, a little about your band. Well, we're uh, an electronic outfit. We dabble in electronic music, but we use MIDI controllers, so mm -hmm. it's a live performance as opposed to, uh, you know, the controllers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, we started out in 2011, I would say. Yeah. Uh, we started out playing, you know, basically basic electronic stuff, and then we kind of brought in that whole live aspect with okay. the rock guitar and everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, I know you said you use these as opposed to controllers. Um, mm -hmm. Have you used the, the U rock guitar in a live setting? In a live setting? Well, what we do is we trigger all our synths uh, through Reason, mm -hmm. and uh, the guitar actually triggers all those synths, which is really nice. And then we automate uh, the switches between instruments, mm -hmm. um, which makes it really easy because we don't have to worry about that. We just yeah. go ahead and just play. You just got to play the notes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as you hit the notes. Yeah, as long yeah. as you hit the notes, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically how we use it. Um, it's, it's a bunch of different combinators, and mm -hmm. it's worked out well ever since we started playing it, but yeah. Awesome. Um, you know, I've always been I've always been kind of in a position where I was I didn't trust MIDI controllers because of latency issues. Right. Do you guys ever run into latency issues with the Rock guitar when you're playing live? No, not with the Rock. No. no, no, no. It's really, really, really uh, responsive, very responsive. So, um, how about in the studio? Have you guys used the Rock in the studio? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Just all for, the time. Like, composing all the time. I mean, it's really fun to just turn on a sound and just start jamming, you know, hoping that you get a good melody going, you know, it's get, fun. Kind of get those creative juices. Flowing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? It beats plucking yeah. on a keyboard for me, man, because oh, like, yeah. I, yeah. I can't play piano, so I usually, I used yeah. to just kind of be like, you know, <laughs> just plucking this, the notes out. This doesn't translate. Yeah, exactly. Right. It doesn't More translate rather than just trying to write each note individually on there, you know, mm. kind of skip a step and makes it more natural right. you know, if you play guitar you know more of a bass player than a guitarist <laughs> but anyways yeah oh, well, it's fun awesome. to jam until you get something good well get me in the know man tell me what what exactly is this midi guitar well um midi guitar it's not a keyboard no it's not a keyboard but it can do everything that a keyboard can yeah but basically in guitar format so, yeah <laughs> you know. like, exactly so what, what it does it uh you know, it has the neck, and then the neck triggers MIDI, and then the MIDI signal goes out to whatever device they're using. Okay. We use a laptop for in our band. Yeah. You can trigger it with, you know, iPads and iPhones, whatever. Yeah. Whatever makes sounds, whatever has a synth. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it, it goes out in MIDI form, and then it gets triggered, and you can play whatever synth you want with it. Soft synths, yeah. usually. Yeah. Um, so does it have, the cap does it have like, built-in sounds? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, I believe that one's plugged in. Yeah. Uh, it comes with about 30 built-in sounds, Okay. which is pretty cool. Uh, there's 15 of them that are guitar sounds, and then the rest of the 15 are synths. And what you actually can do with them is you can stack them, so you can have a little bit of you know both if you want to have a little diversity. Really in there. blend the synth. Yeah, exactly. Well, show me, show me yeah. some some of these built-in sounds this thing's got. All right, want to put up the volume? Yeah, maybe. sure. Let's see here. Now this one I think is dirty bass. Dirty bass. Yeah, yeah, with some guitar. That's classic, man. Yeah. <laughs> and as I'm watching you, it does have literally no latency. You can't hear any. Yeah, no. I didn't hear any latency. No, no, exactly, no yeah. latency whatsoever. And you can add on an, another layer, add the synth layer, and suddenly we're a, <laughs> a little bit more funky, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and then other than that, as we were mentioning, you know, we have you know, the fretboard to control the notes, but we also have a, a pitch bar, right. and we have... Um, assignable you know other controller aspects too like the joystick we use to you know side chain the bass mm -hmm. we've used the knob for high pass low pass filters um we've used it to kind of get that old dubstep wobble in there yeah. are go. the knobs assignable can you tell them what you want yes, yes, yes they are yes, they yes, are. yes they are. exactly so you can get them to do whatever yeah, you want um, exactly i've heard of people using these buttons for scrolling through sounds mm -hmm. on Ableton and pretty much, you know, if you got the imagination, you can... Well, you, you, know, you said you that so. you guys use Reason and you just mentioned Ableton. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't use either one of those DAWs. Mm -hmm. What DAWs is the, the U-Rock guitar compatible with? All of them. All of them. All of them. Yeah, yes. because it's a MIDI controller, so it, it just yeah. acts as a MIDI controller. Mm -hmm. um, even though that it might not recognize it as, a, you know, how usually it comes with the preset saying like mm -hmm. oh you have a let's just say for instance an axiom mm -hmm. it, it might not come with that but it will still work because it's a midi controller okay yeah so mm -hmm. it's really versatile, really versatile in that's that's awesome and um 
So now, as a as a guitar player, you know most guitar players are skeptical of technology. Mm -hmm. Why would a guitar player want a, a a MIDI guitar in their arsenal? Well, definitely for composition. I mean, when you're a guitar player, you might want to, you know, jam out on a violin track or something. You would like some violin sound. You can't really play the violin. I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna take 15 years to learn the violin. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this what this does it kind of liberates you. You can be the violinist that you want it to be, you know, or pretend to be at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can trigger whatever sounds you want to. So you're not only a guitar player, you actually just become a composer, instrumentalist. You know, Danny, yeah. we were talking offline, um, and you were telling me, uh, tell me that reggae story. I think that that was, re or the, your funk band story about, oh, yeah. about the horn um, section. For, I think that was really yeah, powerful. Yeah, I also have a funk band, and for uh, our horn players, you know, they requested for me to give them uh, horn sections. Uh, unfortunately, I can't write treble clef, <laughs> or uh, I don't play horns. So what I did is I just went on to a guitar pro and, you know, played my songs and just kind of jammed around till I get melodies that I liked and I'd go ahead and play them and then Guitar Pro would uh, tab the notations out for me and then boom, I got my horn charts. <laughs> Simple, easy. Otherwise, that would have, it could have taken me months yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. Months, maybe even, <laughs> maybe even years <laughs> to the point. Yeah. So, so real fun. quick, I want to take a minute to let everybody know if you have any questions, go ahead, send them on through to the chat and yeah. we'll, we'll try to address them uh, towards the end of the the okay. winner here, yeah. um, and I know that you rock guitars also having a contest right now where you can win. Uh, uh, I think a fo focus right or not a focus right a personas interface, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, you rock guitar, so that's pretty awesome. Very awesome. You could, yes. I think you can sign up right on the live stream if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yes. So, yeah, um, yeah and, then, and another thing to add that's great about this and why guitar players should have it is check this out. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> it, fits, it fits in a backpack. Now, it fits right? in a backpack. It's a it travel travel compatible, you know. Yep. It, um, that, that's a, that's another awesome feature because, you know, you got, you guys have all heard the stories about airlines breaking guitars right. or, and a lot of people have experienced that. Oh, uh, yeah, that uh, breaks my yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah, it breaks so, my heart just you know, to think about that. It's much easier to carry that thing on if you can just snap it apart, pack it in a bag and go. Yeah, I mean, right. you got this in your keyboard and it's your little mobile studio. Kind of keeps you ke kind of keeps you playing, you know, a lot of like the businessmen that travel but still play music. You know, you can't take a guitar with you. It's not that practical no, to take right, it with yeah, you yeah. everywhere. But you could, it seems like this is a lot more portable, a lot easier to. Yeah, exactly. And I then mean, if you only got a 15 minute break, no worries. You can get this thing going in you know, right. 30 seconds. <laughs> well, if it's it's USB and, and the neck just snaps on and off. I mean, yeah. you snap the neck, you plug in the USB. <laughs> yeah, you're, and you're good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Much easier, I think, I think really. 30 seconds was overselling that one. <laughs> yeah, right. I think um, I agree. And, and I now agree. back to the portability thing, which is. Pretty cool that you actually have, you know, an out for your headphones. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if you're out in an airplane, you can actually pull yeah. this thing out. You're not going to yeah. bother anyone. No, and it's got the sound. built the built in sense. Exactly. So yeah. you can trigger whatever's on there and, yep. and listen to that. Exactly. Um, what if I wanted, you know, what if I wanted to play along with a, a track that, you know, from my favorite band? Am I able oh. to? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you can actually uh, plug your device in through with the audio in and have it go through your headphones. So you just to just to see here, song. we've got yeah. a MIDI in and out. Uh, USB, quarter inch, and that's how we're we're running through the amp right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then an eighth inch out, which would be to run to headphones. Yep. And an eighth inch in, which would be to run from our MP3 player into that's right. Uh, into the guitar, so we yep. could jam around with our favorite song or whatever yep. we wanted yep. to do. Exactly. That's awesome, man. Um, anything else on the portability or why I would want it as a guitar player? Well, you know, this actually differentiates from a lot of the other MIDI guitars. Um. Usually what you have with a MIDI guitar is you'll have either a converter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your pickup itself is going to be a converter, and that's going to go ahead and convert the audio into MIDI. And the problem with those is once you get to the lower range, lower octaves, it takes longer for that conversion to happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, an 80 hertz wave takes something like 12 milliseconds to right, even right. complete one cycle. Exactly. Right. So and you're, you're talking about how there's no latency with this. It's not, exactly. this, not the same with pitch to MIDI devices, mm -hmm. whether that's a MIDI guitar or just a converter. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've tried a converter out, and uh, it didn't work so well. It works, <laughs> it works well when you're playing slow, but if you try to play fast, yeah, it's not, it doesn't quite work. And then you got, you know, you have other ones. You have uh, segmented frets, so every it's divided into six segments, and it's a lot more responsive, but you still have some of the same issues if there's any buzz in the guitar. It has to be perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. If there's any buzz, it throws it off. Throws it off. Yeah, and then there's this one, 
which is has uh, the fretboard sensors. Um, but the cool thing, it's not just buttons. It actually feels like a guitar, so you can yeah. slide. It's really nice, mm-hmm. as opposed to just having like the, you know, the button, so it feels kind of clunky or anything. It's just it kind of slides through, which makes it really natural. It yeah. does look like it's very responsive as well. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing being, you know, being a, a, a traditional guitar and bass player, if you will, I've always kind of heard from people that it looks like a toy. Mm-hmm. What a, what uh, I know that that U Rock has a new model coming out. Right, it's right there. Actually, right, right. right there. <laughs> um, and it's got a lot more of the traditional guitar features. As I'm sitting here, it's got the wood neck. Mm-hmm. You know, the yeah. the fretboard actually kind of looks like an ebony board. Um, but it and it actually has that that uh, like an actual guitar feel to it. Right. Um, versus having that toy feel. Mm-hmm. But it, it's really cool. And I and I wouldn't even say that these have a toy feel after sitting down with it for a few right. minutes. Yeah, and that's the, you know, when we looked at it first we we thought the same thing, but then you get it and it's not just you know, it's not just a little MIDI guitar or anything. You you actually have a full bore controller. Mm, you know, yeah. assignable knobs, the modulation wheel. It's not a toy in any in, by any means. It's controller yeah <laughs> yeah robust controller um you know and midi is one of those things that keyboard players have had for 30 plus years now and yeah so <laughs> finally <laughs> finally, finally our yeah, time <laughs> guitar players have a chance right yeah, especially yeah. bass players they usually get pushed aside and you don't get any cool features or anything <laughs> yeah. like that so. just play those low frequencies yeah. stay right there just yeah. stay right there in the back <laughs> don't talk <laughs> so uh you know what other type of of mini guitar options we talked about with pitch to midi uh yeah. segmented frets i feel like there's one more that we that we uh, didn't talk about. Well, there's there's um like the, the the finger sensors. Um, there's some that are come with you know the in, there's infrared finger sensors or mm-hmm. fretboard mm-hmm. sensors, um, but and then the button ones. But this these are definitely you know superior just because of the playability of it. it just yeah. feels natural. It feels like real strings, mm-hmm. which makes it really awesome. Yeah, it kind of has a, a little bit of a nylon string feel yeah. to it, so it's yeah. a little bit easier to yeah. navigate. But it doesn't have the big nylon, you know, classical neck. Yeah, the that you're big used chunk. To. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a nice neck profile on it as well. So that's one thing that I noticed too. Um, so the the, the U Rock guitar uses uh, fret sensors, right? Yes. Okay. Was, exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Um, you know, we already talked about what what's you know what software it's compatible with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, another thing that I just kind of wanted to to ask you guys is, um, when you are playing live, mm-hmm. you know, you never run into any latency problems when you're running because I mean, do you have two guitar players in your band? Uh, so it's it just, just us two, just you two, mm-hmm. yeah, as the string section, if you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we kind of you know trade off on we do low frequency chords leads it's kind of yeah just, it just kind of goes back and forth just trade off and we automate all that but um no and if there's any issues it doesn't stem from the instruments it might stem from yeah, it's, you know the computer might be running too hot the laptop yeah the mm-hmm. laptop i mean there's there's certain things that the technology is there for but you know you eventually you get a little bit of a funnel mm-hmm. but um so far, it hasn't happened live. <laughs> so, yeah. and technology isn't limitless, so sometimes you do hit the end of exactly, you know, yeah. Like I, you reach the end of the internet or whatever. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> well, we will else. never reach that. There's, there's nothing else that you can do. Right, right, right. Um, so you know, what about notation and tab? Can you like, if you were playing a part, you know, because I don't, I'm not, a, I don't read music. So mm-hmm. say you were playing a part and writing it for me so that I could jam. Mm-hmm. Are you guys able to notate it out into tablature instead? Yes, that's yes. a cool thing. That's a cool thing. Um, so, you know, when you are recording on the DAW, uh, it'll come out in MIDI form, so you'll see it on the piano roll and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, however, when you put it into a program like Guitar Pro, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it triggers it just like you would, you know, when you put in the input, you put in like 5, 10. So you can actually tab out by playing, which is awesome. Yeah. You can literally tab out while you're playing. Is that kind of how you wrote the parts for your yes. for your horn player? Exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly. I just sat there and kind of jammed until I got a melody that I liked. And okay, we'll save that one, and boom, easy as that. Yeah, easy as that. Exactly. Well, uh, I really want to see this thing in action a little bit. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Okay. Anything you guys ready to ready to jam for me? Let's see how we can. Uh, oh yeah, well yeah. I can go ahead and show you how we do it. Um, okay. I'll show you the yeah. maybe the combinators to see how we kind of set all that up. Um, and then, yeah, I can jam on a song for you and maybe just go through a couple of presets. Cool. To show you how these little animation things work. Let's see it in cool. action. Sweet. Yeah, 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 let's do it. All right, let's actually switch over to the screen really quick. Just going to give you a little sense of what I'm doing here. So usually what I have is uh, I'll have Reason set up here. And Reason has these here. I don't, I don't know if you can see, Brennan. So Reason has these combinators. And within these combinators, I'll go ahead and add my patches. And with those patches... I'll put in a mixer and automate those mixers to come in and out whenever I want it to. Um, 
I, you know, there's no correct way to do it. <laughs> so if there's anybody else that does it, I mean, they, they should give us a, a little ring there. I yeah, think the, know. you know, the, the one thing that I would be able to throw in, even though I don't have much experience with it, is just don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, exactly. Because that's, all, that's what music's all about. Right, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's how pedal effects were came up with, was one dude was in his garage experimenting. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So don't, I would just say don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, I guess I will. I won't be afraid. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one day we put on a filter and discover discovered that we could get the you know bass to wobble just by like pure accident. You know, right, exactly. Here and then just went. Wah, 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 wah. I was like, oh. Check so this. Out. <laughs> so here I have actually the LFO rate, or not the LFO rate, the envelope high pass going through this little knob, so I can get a little bit of expression going, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, it's actually more responsive than having a little modulation wheel and everything, you know? You kind of have, like, that knob feel. Well, as a guitar yeah. player, you're so used to turning... Yeah, on. exactly. You're not used to, like, a modulation wheel on a exactly. guitar. Right. It's really uh, weird. Exactly, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it feels really weird. And when you're over, like, a big sound system, man, it just feels great. To yeah, just I hear right. those crank. sounds come out just nice and robust. And... <laughs> All right, well, let's see it in action. Yeah, sure, here. So I'm going to go ahead and just play a track. This is just a bounce sound track. I'll just play along with this so you can kind of get a feel of what we do live here. That's your basic lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, Danny will be in the back with the bass and everything. I could tell it was very responsive to your playing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't hear a stitch of latency. Right, right. Um, you know, it, it felt like everything that you were doing, that you were doing a lot of hammer-ons and hammer-offs, mm -hmm. and it felt like it was responding to everything. Right, right, right. Just right, like right, you yeah. would want your guitar to respond. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a nice thing. And I mean, when you're jamming out by yourself, you can kind of feel that, late, like how that works. Like, uh... uh you can get fast with it. I mean, this particular synth does respond well to going fast, but you can definitely. It responds really well. Mm -hmm. um, and if you scroll through some of these sounds, let me switch over to the screen. Maybe show you some chords. And I usually, what I do is I usually use the tapping feature, so I don't use the plucking. At all, okay. So I can kind of just use it almost like a Chapman stick um, when I'm using chords and everything. Yeah, and then your right hand's that. freed up to do expressions, do expressions and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. very responsive yeah. to the tapping as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here's here's like a pluck of some sort. Oh, I got some got some CPU usage going on. Just one second. And actually, the nice thing too is you can actually tune it. So it comes with a bunch of different tunings. Really? Funny enough, That's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you know, you can go to an open, an open tuning of some sort. I guess one of these issues there, but um, it, you can definitely go ahead. Like now, I put it into drop tuning, uh -huh. which is pretty cool. And I'll show you with this other one right here. Um, here, let's switch over to the to the other camera. Turn it on. I'll go ahead and turn on the tapping so you can kind of tell what I'm doing. And I'll go ahead and put it into the drop. Turn this up. There we go. <laughs> Sounds kind of. It sounded weird. like the sound when your Sega boots up back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian. Sega. Man, bring me, bring me back. Bring me back. I know, man. Look at you're a classy guy. <laughs> so. Oh, 
That's pretty nice. I like that. Yeah. I like that tune a lot. So, so anyways, um, let's go back to that tapping thing I was telling you about. Yeah. So, so you, 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 there you have your drop. You know. You, know, you can play around with that as much as you want. And it comes with a bunch of like open G, everything you want. It's so I got a couple a, a couple of questions. Yes, of course. What scale is the neck? What scale is it? Yeah, neck? is it like full scale neck or is it a shorter it's a, scale? It's a little shorter. Um but it doesn't mean it doesn't really interfere. I believe it's I'm not sure on that on that. Let's see. What's what's the scaling on it? I'm sure we can I'm sure somebody will let us know. Yeah. yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't feel like like looking at it. I mean, it looks shorter because the headstock is obviously missing. Yeah. But it doesn't right, look right. like neck-wise, it's all that much smaller than um, than a normal guitar. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You being a yeah. bass player, how do you kind yeah. of adjust to that? Are you just... Um, you know, I play a little guitar too, but I mean, by all means, I'm like a bass player. That's what I'm good at, but I also enjoy electronic music. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, you know, it's not that big of an adjustment, you know, the, the instrument is well made and is easy to play. You yeah. Know, it's really not that big of a learning curve, you know. Maybe it took me a little while. Of course, <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, and the strings are spread apart enough where you don't it doesn't really matter there. Yeah. Um and that's and, you know and that's nice cuz anyone that can plays guitar can learn. Easily. Yeah, and that's a that's a good thing especially for guitar players, you know, you don't want to have to learn a whole new instrument all over again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's why we don't want to go learn violin. Or exactly. Violin. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to take the 15 years to yeah. Yeah. put it I already spent 15 years on the guitar, why am I going to spend another yeah. one? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh man. Um you know, so I really like I really like how responsive it is while you're tapping. That was that was really powerful to see that in action. Um, you know, what other things do you really like about this guitar that, that you think make it a, a product that stands above its competitors? Well, um, besides the latency, besides the... Yeah. Which is probably the most important. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Besides um, that... It's affordable, It's too, affordable, yeah. Which is great, and it's mass-producible. You know, <laughs> they can make a lot of these, get them out to everybody, so everybody... I think that's right, why it exactly. keeps it affordable. Is exactly, Because yeah. if it wasn't able to be mass-produced, it wouldn't be right, affordable. Right, right, exactly. So it's, it's nice that it's affordable. A lot of kids that, you know, maybe want to pick up a, a MIDI guitar that can't afford a $3,000 guitar that with a converter right. can definitely go in and do a guitar yeah, and pick think, one up. I think but, you can... The, like, the I've seen MIDI con, or, uh, pitch to MIDI converters starting at about a G, about $1,000. Right. $1, right. Um, if I'm just a kid trying to pick up a guitar and learn how to play music, you know, I didn't get my first thousand dollar instrument until I had been playing bass for, you know, ten years. Right, exactly. It's not practical for for a kid to have. So right, yeah. I mean, it allows you know the power of MIDI to be in guitarist hands. You know, <laughs> anybody. So awesome. we had talked about it being affordable for for young for the younger musicians, but you know, say I'm a professional, you know business you know like I, I this is what i do i gig like night after night mm -hmm. you know, how could this thing really make me better as a, as a guitar player oh okay well you I mean if, if yeah. you're in it depends on what you, you're in it doesn't actually it doesn't matter what genre you're in you're in a metal band yeah. i know a lot of metal bands have since now mm -hmm. uh they do a lot of programming um it makes it so it doesn't have to be a sample you know as a, yeah. as a guitar player you might be jamming out on the riff you want to go over to a synth synth lead you can just go ahead and jump on the guitar which is pretty cool i mean how does the um, how do the like guitar sounds respond on it? Is, does it have like a built-in acoustic guitar or anything? Yeah, like that? yeah. Let me see. Let me go ahead and scroll through some of this. Actually, you guys get some of these settings to show you. Let's see. Let's go over to nylon, of some sort. Let me go. Ooh, that's kind of loud. Let me turn that down. Bring that on. <laughs> now let's see. Want to be a little too loud? You can kind of. <laughs> there we go. I love I love uh, Will Ferrell. So. And, and that one's close school. to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think that, that was one of the few times I ever cried in a movie. <laughs> and it brought tears of joy. It wasn't from sorrow. It was, <laughs> you're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. Forever, Blue. Oh, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, go run us through some of these patches. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was that was cool. the nylon, um, and these are what's included on the exactly. guitar. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. So let's see. This one is. That's an acoustic fingered. Uh, that's the that's the, <laughs> the name of the patch there. 
I believe that's supposed to be a, it's a steel string. Yeah. Yeah, steel yeah so string, it sounds real good. Pick. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's really responsive right there, man. Um, I mean, that's awesome. You very rarely find a trim bar on a on an acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I think that may be the first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> let's see another one here. There's a, uh, let's see, evil bass. I like the sound of that. Yeah, that one's got to be fun. <laughs> Anything evil is fun. No, I'm just kidding. Kids don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Halloween, man. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. Got to get spooky right. with it a little. Get a little bit. spooky. Let's see. What's this guy right here? Uh-huh, that's no. It's kind of an electric, uh, overdriven. And then, let's see this one. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was Halloween, man. <laughs> So now, uh, what about for like, like learning? If I'm a, a beginning guitar player and I kind of want to learn, does this thing have like built-in tracks or anything you can play along with, or would that be something that you would have to work through with your DAW? Oh, you can work that with your DAW. Um, I believe this does have uh, a demo, but it, that you should definitely have it. So you, you know, you bring in your own music mm -hmm, into that. Mm -hmm. um, but the cool thing is you can run it through it. Okay. So I mean, there's gonna be you're gonna have a good mix going because you can get through your headphones and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's nice at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know how how would this help a guitar player who was kind of just learning? Does it have any any really features that stand out like that that can help a guitar player, an intro guitar player, if you will? Um, well, as an intro guitar player, um, the whole point that you know, well, first of all, when I was learning guitar, I didn't like to tune. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess in that sense, yeah, you could start off yeah. with saying that. That, that was the worst part. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to play music. I didn't care for exactly. Music. Yeah, exactly. You play out of tune. That's like backwards practice. Yeah, yeah. Time. Um, I guess the accessibility of it will make it was the biggest feature for a learning guitar player. Okay. You know, mom maybe doesn't want to hear <laughs> Billy play at two in the morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pick this up with some headphones Absolutely. and I think you're straight. It's a good thing, too, about, uh, you know, electronic drums are the same way. I, right, I exactly. would always tell people that, you know, this has a volume knob. And that's important because once your kid's been banging on some drums or playing their guitar for three, four hours in a row. Right. You know, you <laughs> I know. think you'll be straight after yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. You you don't want to hear any you would be good to hear no guitar for the next three weeks. Right. Yeah. I much rather hear the thump as uh -huh. opposed to the guitar. <laughs> uh -huh. Um well I'm gonna check and see how we are on time or questions. Um sounds good. Okay. So um Nestor, why don't you? I, I like the you know I, I like the song that you were playing there before. Anything else you want to kind of show us, or are we still having a little bit of technical? We we're having some, we're having some technical difficulties yeah. there. Yeah, 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 reasons not liking the uh, <laughs> live stream. Yeah, the, all the cameras and all that good stuff. But um, let me see. Let me see if I can try that again. She's uh, it's camera shy. Yeah, it is camera shy. Poor <laughs> computer, right? <laughs> what was the bass one that you were playing? Where you how how did you, how did you do, uh, like layer on the two synths? Um, on a uh, evil bass and then I just put some guitar over it so on here it has um, a function for and the synth sound so I was able to just take off the, the synth and that extra layer yes, would probably be just regular guitar mm -hmm. open what is what does that button do open does that just put it into open tune yeah it's just no with the open with the open notes here oh no what you mean about tuning oh yeah, okay no, sorry but yeah, I'm, I'm Oh, right. <laughs> so what happens is you go ahead and you click on the, you hold it down, uh -huh. and then you can go ahead and scroll through the tuning. So oh, number perfect. One will yeah. so get to a specific. specific. Yeah. If you want that drop tuning, you can just go ahead and click on it, and then yeah, go up to down. six. How about tap? What does our tap button do? Tap. Uh, the tap just turns on the tap function on and off. So when I have it on, I'm able to just get notes. Oh, uh, I got you. Just tap and it. if it's off, then you actually yeah, have to pick I gotta the note. play it like a traditional guitar. Got it. Okay, and the guitar button just. Um, these these are for going through all these all the, all the different sounds and stuff. Okay, you got guitar sounds, sounds and synth sounds. And yeah, that's what yeah, those yeah. do. We'll just put on a random one, see what comes out. You're blowing Nestor away over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> You're rocking too much. <laughs> um, how about what? This is the button that that I've been waiting for, the U rock button. What does this button do? Does it make me rock? <laughs> yeah. 
Touch it and the sun explodes. It's like the pro- it's like the producer button on a mission. You have to be ready for it though. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be ready for it. Um, to be ready for it. I've never used the rock button. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not sure what it does there, but I'm sure it rocks. Let's actually let's click it. Why not just click it? Yeah. Let's let's figure it out. <laughs> right. We're on the fly. Made it distorted. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> it kicked on my distortion pedal. I think I got this working again. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it works pretty well. Um, yeah, so back to what I was doing. <laughs> There's let's, re- a, let's rewind a little. Let's bit. rewind. Yeah, yeah rewind. let's rewind. So okay. back to these combinators. We can switch over. Um, what I do is uh, you can get a lot of these from the internet. They're for free. Uh, a lot of people, you know, um, they'll post it up and really just them to do yeah. policies yeah. usually for credit. Um, so these these guys, what you can do, which is really awesome, is you you can go from any soft synth, you know, you have a VST, you can plug in whatever. So this this patch right here. Right here. So that's, that's like a dead mouse patch. You know, you've heard of dead mouse. He's some famous producer guy. Every other famous producer guys. Um, you know, so we can go from that type of lead. We can imitate that, and we can go from that to a you know to a big crush bass in the matter of just a couple bolts, which is really awesome. So here's a. So you're gonna have like that wobble effect, and let me show you how you can actually automate that. So you have the kind of scrolling through that 16 note, um, and what you can do is you can go ahead and show you it here on Reason. You can do this with any DAW, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, what I do specifically is I'll go to like uh, well, let me open this up first, show you the devices here. So the LFO array is being controlled by this guy over here. So you want to go ahead and match that. And over to this button right here, which is right now is being controlled by the right now controls that envelope filter. Mm-hmm. So you just go ahead and control, do the remote override over here, and go ahead and do this. Go to where that rate is. Come on, computer. There we go. Edit remote override mapping. And what you do is just go ahead and twist the knob. Pretty simple. And, there, and it assigns it to it, so it's that simple. So we'll go ahead and replace that. So now you go from having that. You just got it right on your knob, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's doing much, but when you are able to control that, mm-hmm. it's it just liberates you. It's awesome because you're no longer having to go in, and, you know. If you you know if you work with DOS, right? And when you work with DAWs and you automate stuff, you know that when you have those annoying lines and you have to click on it and you have to make sure that it's going up at the exact same time that you want it to go, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get glitchiness, so now you can actually perform with it. Pretty cool. Um, So that's one one that's the one way that we use it. That's how Danny does all the LFO rate stuff. Um, uh, Another way you can use it. Is with that envelope that I showed you guys earlier, but we do that with you know any other things. Let's see, like an organ here. This is a Wolf Gang Gardener, just another producer guy. Um, it's an organ patch, but the versatility of it is just insane. Uh, <laughs> so so evil. Anyways, um, yeah the. Like I said, this is with with any other DAW, so that's mm-hmm. also that's the nice part yeah, about it's compatible this. across the board. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You don't so, have to limit yourself to what what mm-hmm. you're where you're working. You right. Know, some people don't work on this DAW, or exactly. they don't work on this yes. one. Right, so right. it's nice to be able to and spread I think, it across. The yeah, board. and I usually I usually actually write in Logic, and uh, you know it works it works for all of them. Mm-hmm. So that's that's nice to know at least. You know, it's very nice. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, just wondering, do we have any questions that we've got out there? Yeah, I think we're. I think, sure. Um, we'll get. We're gonna go dark for five minutes so we we can get all set up to take some questions. So let's hang out for just a second. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I think we're. I think we're back and ready to go. Um, so one person asked. asked, um, Well, first we found out what the U rock button does. Yes, yes, it it (laughs) definitely does help you rock. But it's that's how you. 
activate the kind of instructional side of the mm-hmm. guitar mm-hmm. where it will play a loop um, in a certain key yes. and kind of help you understand the fundamentals of yeah. that key. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. So if it's so like a E minor pentatonic, if you play out of E minor, minor pentatonic, it won't register. For either you, that, so it, either it'll, it'll, help it'll you. pitch correct you. Right, yeah. exactly. Or yeah. sound that'll tell you you're making an error that will help you kind of, you know, keep your bearing straight when it mm-hmm. comes to... Yeah, I, just, I believe it just pitch correct. It just takes you over to that next note that is in the key. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's good for learning, actually. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the main reason, of course, we got into that and you guys, you know, didn't have the experience with it is because you guys know how to play. <laughs> right. You, know, you, know, you don't necessarily have to learn when you yeah. spent, you know, like we said, 10, 15 years <laughs> yeah. learning uh, already. Yeah. So, um, you know, before we get into questions, I wanted to give you guys cool. a second to talk about your band and what you guys are doing and what Hey, oh cool. yeah, well, um, about well, our video, name is video release. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, we are Satellite Empire. Uh-huh. Um, we actually just made a remix for uh, the Hans Zimmer soundtrack of Inception. Uh, mm-hmm. The song's called Time. You can check that out on uh, the Facebook, of course, facebookcom slash Satellite Empire. Yep. If I could pronounce my own band name, <laughs> yeah. that would be beneficial. You guys, help, right? you guys came up with it. I figured you would be just a little bit better yeah, you know. saying the name. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, what you make I'm a, I am a failure in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what else do you guys, what's new and exciting in your guys' band's world? Yeah. What do you got coming up? What's Oh, we, we have a new music video coming out okay. on the first. Very excited for it. Very, mm-hmm. very excited. I've uh, been putting a lot of time into it. I have a production company called Polarity. So um, I'm actually able to work on music as at the same time work on, you know, the video aspect, yeah. which is really cool. You're going to give a nice blend and tell a really, really in-depth story. So, yeah, we're excited for that right now, as of right now. As I, I, I can imagine. Um, so let's get let's get into questions. Nestor, you've got the questions set up right in front of you. I can't cool. see them. So yeah. uh, go ahead and ask, ask the questions, and then we can all pool our gigantic brains of knowledge yes. here. Yes, right. our massive heads here. Yes. All right, so the first one is from Christopher. Can you tell us about sensor based versus pitch based triggering? All right, Christopher. So we, we kind of covered that in the beginning. Yeah. Um, so basically, when you have pitch based uh, triggering, what happens is that it takes that audio, takes that audio, and it com- and that audio, audio wave, wave and it converts it over to a MIDI signal. Um, the higher you get in the register, the more responsive it's going to be. It's, it's take basically less time. the same concept of a trigger in a drum set. Exactly. Where it takes yeah. the transient exactly. um, and converts it into a MIDI file. Yeah. But what it basically does is it takes that wave because every individual frequency or note creates a wave. Exactly. What yeah. the pitch to MIDI corrector does is it t- or pitch to MIDI um, takes that pitch, converts it into you know, one of 128 MIDI notes right. that in turn triggers a signal through the computer. Yeah. Yes. Very eloquently put. Thank you yes. very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to be like, oh, the pitch yeah. and the I, thing. Um, <laughs> I, I am kind of a tech nerd, so. So with a sensor base, there's no conversion. It's just there. Mm-hmm. So it goes from being converted to just playing the actual mini note. For, yeah, it's it's a, a, it's basically the same thing as when you hit that uh, on a keyboard. You right. Know, the keyboard will know how hard you hit the note and stuff like that, yeah. but it knows that you hit the note because you hit the actual. Yeah. Note. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's the same thing with the the sensor base. The fingerboard sensor. Yep, exactly. Cool. Well, then cool. let's thank you, Christopher. Thank let's you. go on to the second one. Uh, what program for charts and notation again? You got Guitar Pro. Yeah. Sibilus. Sibelius. Sibelius. I Sibelius. How they it, but, uh, Sibelius. Guitar Pro. Sibelius. Cool. And, and then the, Notion. The Notion. I'm not yeah. sure if PowerType is a thing anymore. That's I one I used to couldn't use. Tell you. No, well, do not know. I know <laughs> That's guitar, another one. I know Guitar Pro and Sibelius both work great. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, Sibelius. Yeah. The, I, I don't know prices on, but I know they're both. Relatively affordable. Yeah, I've used yeah. Guitar Pro extensively. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. That's, really that's cool. what we use mm-hmm. for tabbing. And, and, it, and it's funny because you can actually export MIDI from Guitar Pro and then put it into anything else. So you could actually go ahead and put that into like a drum machine. Mm-hmm. And it's already all tab out. Yeah, for you. I'm pretty sure you can well. do the same thing in Sibelius, but I don't know how user friendly it is when it comes to okay. using it on other software and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, cool. all right. That's for the notation programs. Now let's go. Is it velocity sensitive and does it send? After touch. Okay. So the actual the strings actually detect your picking and translate it into velocity. Uh, so when you are picking, you do have that velocity. So if you're picking harder, it knows exactly. that you're you're getting after it. And if you're picking lighter, it mm-hmm. knows that it. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Which is pretty cool. Because um, that's kind of like the keyboard thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you get well, yeah. However hard you hit, it gives sends the velocity note right. to the computer, so it knows how hard to hit that. Yeah. And then uh, there is no after touch, um, but you can use the modulation joystick. Mm-hmm. So that's. At least you can use that, you know, to compensate for yeah. it. There. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now, 
Denise says, uh, or Dennis? It looks like Denise. Says Denise? Denise, okay. Is there a neck for smaller hands? Um, well, I believe they're working on a narrower neck. Um, well, in all honesty, the, as well, the neck, neck yeah, is not that yeah. big. Yeah. But yes, yeah. they are working on a, a smaller neck. But the neck is actually, you know, the no. the... The, the new yeah. with does have a smaller profile too. Right, and this one actually, this one's actually a smaller profile as well. Um, I believe that is the new neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this this is actually a lot smaller. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, yes, there are smaller necks. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Denise. Now let's go to the next one. Can I upgrade my Gen 1 to Gen 2? Okay, I think you can email UROC about that. Yeah. Um, just go ahead and email them at info at UROC. Guitar.com. I think you should be able to. they be able to help you out there. For sure. All right, from Chris. Yang is awesome. I've noticed it's even better directly to analog synth via MIDI cable and either over USB. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In, my, in my opinion, uh, MIDI typically works better than USB across the board. I right. Feel, I feel like I've had a lot more success with an actual MIDI cable right. versus mm -hmm. USB. But the problem is, is like MIDI was replaced kind of by USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you don't find it all, yeah. you know, all that often. It's like, it's kind of like quarter inch versus wireless. Like the wireless is going to do the trick. Exactly. It's going to get the signal there. Yeah. Right. You're going to get just a little bit better of a signal, a more clear and defined signal if you just run it with a quarter inch cable. So it's the same yeah. thing with MIDI. You're going to get a little bit better performance. Yeah. Um, if you run MIDI versus USB. Yeah. It's just yeah. the whole the analog digital thing. Oh, and USB has so much going on. It's, right. It's, it's, you know, it's a, you literally, it's, Mm. part of the that's the U in USB and so right. um, <laughs> it, it, it's it's just got so much going on that it uh, it's not specialized right for exactly that. exactly or yeah, that's yeah. exactly what MIDI is made to do yeah. right right, um, right that's what it's been made to do so you know it's 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 always going to be better if you use it's dedicated for something versus right. using the, the universal, universal. Yeah, yeah exactly it's like your TV remote, whenever yeah. the one TV remote, TV is yeah. great. But then when you get the universal remote, you're always like, why isn't this button? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what the heck, man? <laughs> so, so, yes, it is awesome. Thank you for that comment. Yes. Um, let's see here. So, next scale question from Brandon. Good name. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm not sure that's a question. Move on. Oh, uh, I guess. I was the brand. In the oh, 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 makes okay. sense. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's right. <laughs> a good name. <sighs> it's like it is. It is full scale. Yeah. Oh, 22 inches from the nut to the brain. 22, 22 full scale. Yep, yep. Full scale. There's your answer. Yep. Thank you. Neck, what does it say? Slightly modified fret spacing that makes it easier to. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Working on a new neck to be the same as. Standard Strat style neck, which uh, I believe that's going to be something like that over there, but yeah. or a little bit. Yeah, like this one, you could see looks like yeah. it's you know. You, you, I think you're only looking at another inch. Right, right. right. Hand version. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the U rocket actually inverts it. You can actually invert it. Um, but the control panel will still remain the same on the panel, so you yeah. can invert it. Yeah, there's it's left hand mode. <laughs> right, but it's uh, you're gonna have that cut out. There. I think lefties are are used to getting some yeah. hate. And yeah, I know. Poor lefties. I'm sorry, you lefties. Walk, you walk into a guitar <laughs> store and there's 900 yeah. right hand models and they're like, One. you got any lefties? Yeah, we got six. <laughs> yeah. So, so sorry. Lefties. But you can definitely switch it up, which is kind of nice. At and least. if you want to, you know, if you kind of want a better, you know, career path, you know, baseball players that are left handed typically get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Um, so they there's do. there's definitely a world for lefties. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You're <laughs> all awesome. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey, oh, Jimmy man. was left-handed too. Yeah, and he played it upside down, so you can mm -hmm. play it. Oh, Jamie see, Hendrix mode. yeah, new Jimmy style. There we yeah. go. Jimmy definitely was left-handed. So. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Jim, does this interface with most programs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, MIDI, MIDI. DAW, uh, tablets. tablets. So glad to tablets. use any type of synth. Everything you'll be able to interface. Well, it is a MIDI with. controller at the end of the day, so that's exactly. going to recognize. Yeah. That. Yep. Yep. So you're good in that aspect. Okay. Let's see. We already answered the. Uh, Teaching question. Let's see. Anyone else use anyone else use with the iPads? Uh, so you need a you actually need a camera connector kit, I believe, for the iPad. Well, it's just USB to 30 pin or B to uh, Thunderbolt. They have those cables. Yeah, exactly. And once yeah. you get that, you just plug it right in, and mm -hmm. it'll trigger sense off of uh, off your iPad. Rip. 
Yeah. Exactly. And I believe those are pretty inexpensive yeah. too. So yeah, it's 30, like, yeah, you're good. Yeah. I, we got an upcoming program and I just bought 250 of them for all of our stores. Oh, wow. So nice. They're, wow. About, they're about 30 bucks a pop. That's not okay. bad. And I'm sure you can use that with other, other. But it's USB. It just basically takes that 30 pin connector and turns it into USB. So if you wanted to use like a USB mic or anything like that, you can right. use it all on the, on the, with that one little connector. All right. Cool. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. 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 Right on. All right. So. Alan Huffman. I was hoping one of these could would focus on how a keyboard player might use one, assuming they had least basic skills. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, well, first off, it has that learning yeah, yes. so I think that that will help. Uh, that will help our keyboard friends because they understand scales. You have to to, yeah. to be able to play yeah. the piano. Yeah, exactly. So it'll help them translate to the scales. Um, For me, well, I mean, like I said, it does translate to the piano roll. <laughs> but yeah. you get an advantage because you play the guitar, maybe you're learning, your keyboards you're learning. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to start playing this. Where is this? What am I doing? That translates yeah. to the piano roll, and you're able to go forward and see what you're doing. I, think that would be good. I, I feel like it's more beneficial for guitar players to understand the yeah. guitar versus the, vi the vice versa for the keyboard player to understand the guitar well, but yeah. it's all kind of the same thing it's if you can figure out how to take this and turn it into this right you're good and that's the problem with us guitar players yeah. is figuring, <laughs> from out, this, figuring out how to turn this to this, to this. Right. Yeah, yeah 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 exactly and your keyboard players are so good stop that yeah. <laughs> just keep playing the piano yeah, you guys are already right away. he is jealous of you yeah, yeah. <laughs> alright um, is it USB powered if not, does it have batteries in it? Um, yeah, it can actually be powered by batteries or USB. Yeah. Um, now, here, here's a question for yes. you. What does it come with out of the box? Is it is it does it have batteries or do you just go with USB? Can you put in rechargeable batteries? You can. Yeah, it's actually the. the let me just show you in the back yeah. here. It's just going to be double A batteries, I and mean, you can put in the rechargeable batteries, no problem. So it's just kind of like the same. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the USB, it does. It is USB powered, mm -hmm. so you can just plug it in and play. That's no problem. If you have one of those, uh, you know, like a wall charger for an iPad or an mm -hmm. iPhone or anything, you can also plug that in. Yeah. So it's pretty versatile. Yeah, how I think you we're doing it. that with the. With yeah, the with that one. Yeah. Like, uh, exactly. In case right. the battery went out. Yeah. So I mean, you have, you have plenty of options there for. So USB or them. battery, whatever, uh, whatever flavor you would prefer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's see. Uh, when you record MIDI data, you can go back and edit every note. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, and that's awesome. The beauty of MIDI is that it's not actually recording audio, it's recording notes. So right. So if you go in and you're playing and you make one mistake, you can go into your DAW. Almost yeah. every single one will allow you to do it and just move a MIDI note. All right. One so, note over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can Boom. slide it or you slide you know, it, quantize, quantize, do whatever. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was always one thing that I liked in, in, in the MIDI world was if you say you're playing a synth, right? You're laying down a synth and you think yeah. it's really cool and you start moving forward with the song. Um, so that synth doesn't fit anymore. Right. Well, if you're laying down an audio track, you got to go back and record the whole. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh my you know? gosh! Well, I don't even MIDI, you just go in and you switch a synth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to go. Yeah, I don't like that sound. Oh, here or, we go. Or work on the synth. Try to make it better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. All right. Cool. Um, all right, Mark. Please explain the giveaway for us. Um, they're giving away, it's in this little packet I got here, uh, giving away a bundle including a DAW, Persona Studio One Professional 2, and the white YRG-1000 that's sitting uh, at Nestor's left there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess email info at you Rock Guitar if you need more more uh, information. I think they're just going to pick one at a later time. probably. Right, later yeah. On. I believe the form didn't work, so yeah, just go ahead and email. The form doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, Email info at yeah. urockguitar.com yeah. and they will get you signed up for the contest. Yep. I know there are also shirts and some other cool stuff like that too. Yep. So anything that's free is, is always good with me. Yes, I love free stuff. There's nothing better. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go into that. All right, that's the last question here. I see uh, ever use it to play video games. I personally use yeah. it. It is yeah. uh, there is on the little button panel there. We didn't get to it because we were stumped by the U Rock button. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> there is a video game button. Yes, the video game button. And I know it's a yeah. flex, flex cartridge yeah. compatible with uh, yeah. some sort of video game console. I'm not a video gamer then. Yeah. Yeah. Much, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. But you can I know that there is a button for video games. <laughs> um, so that tends me leads me to believe that. <laughs> Take an educated guess. No, but yeah, I'm gonna estimate that yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but if you have any questions about that, just again, go ahead. And Info, you run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
So keep the questions coming if we've got anything. Yeah. We've got this nice. Uh, I know that they all uh, the the folks at U Rock also told me that all of these questions will have they're going to create somewhere where you can find out the answers to all these yes. questions. Yes, cool. Um, and at the end of the day, if you ever have any questions, info at U Rock Guitar, and mm-hmm. there's a, a very helpful team. You know, on the other end of this wall here, that's yeah. ready to take care and answer any of your questions. Again. Yes, and if you have any questions on what we did today, you can always send us a message. We're friendly. Yeah, we won't bite. <laughs> Just go ahead and send us a message over Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So check us out on Facebook. Yeah. Give us a like. Check out our songs. Yeah. We're gonna have really cool videos to be posting yeah. soon. Yeah. Any tour uh, information? You guys hitting the road anytime soon? Not yet, man. Not, not yet, yet, but not soon yet. here. It's soon one of those here. things, man. We got jobs and lives. You yeah, know, that's you know. the thing. <laughs> but I mean. We do well, I would say. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll be posting Brendan's number online. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. In case anybody wants that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think they're more interested in, in you guys here. So, well, uh, if we've got no other questions coming through, then I think, uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Right, Thank you.